Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week three, video four. In this video, we are going to talk about the retain function. Now in the previous video of this week, we talked about the lag function and how to use the lag function to read across rows in SAS. Now reading across rows is important and the lag function lets you compare values within one column across different rows. And that's super useful, but really that's not adequate. Often you need to do things a lot more complex than just look at what is happening in the previous row. And you might have to do that in different ways too. So let me introduce you guys to the retain function. The retain function is very similar to the lag function. Very, very similar. The primary difference between retain and lag is that when you use the lag function, SAS stores the value in that previous row in a new variable. But in the retain function, SAS actually just stores it within the same variable. What do I mean when I, what do I, mean when I say that? Let's, let's uh, create a new data set here. Um, and I'm going to work off of the data set uh, OK underscore expanded. We've already seen this data set um, in this bootcamp, so I'm not going to open it again. I'm going to call my new data set poke num, poke underscore num. And what I'm going to do here is I want to write a retain statement for a new variable that I'm creating, new underscore id. And I'm going to set that value to 0. Okay. I'm going to set the value to 0 for the very first time before SAS initiates every single row in this data set. And you'll see what I mean by that. And once I've retained that value, I don't have to tell SAS to store that retained value in a new variable. It stores it within the same variable. And it updates what is stored for every single row. Uh, let, let me talk about what this means in a second. You'll understand when you see what the output looks like. So new ID equals new ID plus one. I'm going to write that, right? Let's run this. We'll look at our output and then we'll talk about what retain statement is doing. Okay, there's my log. All right, so log looks okay. In my output, we have an ID statement here, which goes from one through 92, right? And we just created a new variable called new ID which also goes from one through 100, right? Uh, now we've done that using merely two lines of code, just two lines of code within, within, between, the set, between the set and the run statement. So what are we doing here? What we are trying to do here is we are telling SAS to remember the value of new ID for each row and save it within the new ID variable itself. It does not have to be saved in a new variable like the lag function did. It's going to save it within the same variable. We initialize new ID to be zero before any rows ever started. And then for the first row, you'll see we initialized it to zero. And when you initialize it, don't use the equal symbol. The equal symbol does not apply within the retain statement. And if you do it, SAS will throw you an error. Uh, and you'll figure out that something is wrong there. But if you don't use the zero, set it to if you initialize new ID to zero for the very first row when the program data occurs in row one, it's going to remember that new ID should be equal to zero. And then it's going to say new ID equals new ID plus one, which is new ID equals the previous value of new ID, which is zero plus one. So now the value of new ID is one. So for the first row, SAS enters the value one for the variable new ID. And then program data vector moves to the second row. When it is moving to the second row, it's going to rewrite its memory of what should be in new ID. Previously, new ID had the value zero, but now that we've updated it, now new ID has the value one. So for the second row, SAS remembers the value one for the variable new ID. And then when it comes to the second row, it says new ID has to be incremented by one again. So one plus one is two. The new value of new ID is two. It's going gonna, it's gonna to write that into the second row, and then it's also going to remember it for the next row. So in the next row, we begin with the value two, and then we add one more number to that. We increment it by one one more time, and it goes to three. And then when it gets to the next row, the value three is remembered or retained by the program data vector, and is incremented by one again to get to four, so on and so forth, right? So what it is doing here, and this is incredibly powerful, is that it is remembering the value of retain for every single row. You don't have to tell it to do it every single time. It will automatically remember it. Every time the value new ID is updated, 
SAS re-remembers what, what is in that value and it remembers it in that same column. So you don't need a new column like that lag function. And this lets you create something like this uh, new ID variable without much effort at all, right? So it can be super helpful to accomplish certain things within, uh, within SAS. Now, this is a super useful way to do this, but I want to add that there's actually a second way to, to, uh, to accomplish the same objective. Let's say I want to create something called pokenum2 um, poke underscore expanded. I want to do the same thing we just did, but I want to show you guys a different ways to do it. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip my retain statement. Instead, I'm just going to say new ID plus one, right? Uh, this particular statement here, that syntax is called a sum statement. The sum statement doesn't have variable equals and then function. It just has the function. That's it. Uh, sum statement is used for really simple functions like this one where you're incrementing by one. And the sum statement is actually a combination of the sum operator, which is what we did earlier here, and the retain statement, which is what we wrote here. Right? The sum statement automatically incorporates both of those things. So what we did with two lines of code in this data step, we can do with just one line of code right here. Let's run and see if it works. Open my log statement. That looks good. And then my output data set, which gives me the same thing. It did the same thing. It had the sum operator and the retain operator, and both of them are built into that sum statement right here. Uh, so so um, retain within SAS is pretty useful uh, for looking at things like sum or for counting variables or for adding things up, uh, which is very helpful, but you have to be very, very careful with the retain operator. The retain operator um, is very powerful and it actually does not matter where you use the retain operator within your set and run statement. No matter where you use it, irrespective of order, SAS will remember the value of that variable that you're trying to set to be retained. Uh, but when used incorrectly, and it is very easy to incorrectly use that retain function, SAS will throw, uh, SAS will go wonky. And it will go wonky without throwing an error message. So it's very easy to use retain incorrectly, screw up your output, but then never see an error message saying you've done something wrong. So if you just use the retain operator as part of coding, and then you check your log, it doesn't look like you have any errors, but you think you've got the right thing, that may not always happen. So whenever you use retain, or for that matter, when you use any function that, that uh, reads across rows, like the lag function we saw earlier, please be sure to open your output data set, randomly check five to 10 rows, randomly check and make sure that it worked as you intended for it to work. Because SAS won't always throw an error, but that doesn't mean you got the right thing. Now, I also showed the sum statement, which is similar to the retain, which incorporates the retain statement in there. Uh, I don't prefer using the sum statement that much for the simple reason that I like my code to be explicit. So when I come back to read it later or if somebody else is reading it, they can understand exactly what I'm doing. Uh, the sum statement accomplishes the same thing with fewer lines of code, but it's not very explicit. And I prefer not using that kind of syntax when I do my programs. You're welcome to use whichever one you're comfortable with and both should accomplish the same thing anyway. 